In the tapestry of 20th century geopolitics, few national narratives are as compelling and turbulent as that of Yugoslavia, a country carved from the clashing titans of empires marked by its birth in the flames of the First World War and its eventual disintegration in the early 1990s amid brutal conflict, Yugoslavia's story is a dramatic saga of ambition, betrayal, and resilience. This essay delves into the heart of Yugoslavia's historical journey, exploring the deep currents that shaped this fascinating region and the indelible marks it left on the global stage. The creation of Yugoslavia was less of a natural progression and more a decision forged in the chaotic aftermath of World War I. As empires crumbled, the regions of Serbia, Montenegro and parts of the Austro-Hungarian Empire coalesced into a single sovereign entity. This was a bold geopolitical experiment designed to stabilize the region but fraught with complexities from its inception. Leaders from these diverse regions including the influential Serb politician Nikola Pasic, envisioned a nation that could stand as a robust buffer against both Eastern and Western influences. The Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, as it was initially called, was proclaimed in December 1918. This act of unity however masked the simmering ethnic and cultural tensions that lay beneath the surface. The administrative and political structures were predominantly centralized which, while necessary for national unity, began to strain the diverse ethnic ties that bound the new state. The early years were marked by significant political and social instability, setting the stage for the authoritarian shift that would come with King Alexander I. King Alexander I ascended to the throne under the weight of immense national expectations. His reign began with promises of democracy and unity, but as ethnic tensions escalated, he adopted a more authoritarian approach. In 1929, the king dissolved parliament and renamed the country Yugoslavia, signifying a new era of centralized governance. The shift was dramatic, political parties were banned, and a royal dictatorship was established, with the king assuming near-absolute power. This move alienated many ethnic groups, particularly the Croats and Slovenes, who saw it as a Serb domination of the Yugoslav identity. This period highlighted the inherent challenges of governing such a diverse populace under a single banner. The dictatorship, while temporarily quelling political dissent, planted the seeds of deeper nationalistic resentments. Yugoslavia's fragile unity was shattered with the Axis invasion in April 1941. The country was quickly divided among Germany, Italy, and Hungary each annexing parts of it. This division was not just territorial but also ideological, giving rise to two major resistance movements, the Royalist Chetniks and the Communist Partisans. The Partisans, led by Josip Broz Tito, emerged as the more successful group, gaining support due to their promise of an egalitarian Yugoslavia. Their resistance was not just against the Axis powers but also a civil war against the Chetniks and other collaborating forces. By the end of the war, Tito's partisans controlled much of the country, setting the stage for the socialist Yugoslavia that was to follow. World War II left Yugoslavia devastated but also sowed the seeds for a new social and political order under Tito, who would rule the country for the next several decades. The war also intensified the ethnic and ideological divisions that would later contribute to Yugoslavia's disintegration. Under Josip Broz Tito, Yugoslavia embarked on a unique political experiment. Emerging from the devastation of World War II, Tito's regime combined authoritarian leadership with a form of decentralized socialism. This approach was designed to accommodate the diverse ethnic groups within Yugoslavia while maintaining firm control from the center. Tito's Yugoslavia was marked by its non-alignment during the Cold War refusing to align strictly with either the Soviet Union or the Western Bloc Yugoslavia, charted a middle path, founding the Non-Aligned Movement. This stance gave Tito and his country a significant role on the global stage, attracting aid and attention from both sides of the Iron Curtain. Economically, Tito implemented self-management models in businesses, where workers had a say in operations, a stark contrast to the strict state-controlled economies of other Eastern Bloc countries. 
Initially, this model spurred growth and development, but over time, inefficiencies and corruption began to erode the economic fabric, setting the stage for future crises. By the 1980s, the economic and political structures underpinning Yugoslavia began to falter. Economic stagnation and rising national debt created a fertile ground for ethnic nationalism to resurface. Leaders in various republics, particularly Serbia under Slobodan Milosevic, began exploiting nationalist sentiments to consolidate power. The weakening central authority and the resurgence of old ethnic divisions were exacerbated by the death of Tito in 1980. Without his unifying presence, the federal system he had carefully maintained began to unravel. The 1980s saw a rise in nationalist rhetoric and a decline in inter-ethnic cooperation, which were further fueled by economic hardship and political instability. This period was critical in setting the stage for the violent dissolution of Yugoslavia. Key events, including the rise of Milosevic and the manipulation of historical grievances, played into the narratives that would drive the republics apart. The breakdown of Yugoslavia culminated in a series of conflicts that began in 1991, starting with Slovenia and rapidly followed by Croatia-Bosnia and Herzegovina and eventually Kosovo. These conflicts were characterized by their brutal nature and complex ethnic dimensions, involving not only Yugoslav forces but also various ethnic militias. The international community intervened with varying degrees of success. UN peacekeeping forces and NATO airstrikes played crucial roles particularly in Bosnia and Kosovo. These conflicts were marked by widespread atrocities, including ethnic cleansing and genocide, most notably in Srebrenica in 1995. The wars left a deep humanitarian crisis in their wake, with thousands dead and millions displaced. War crimes trials, notably at the International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia, ICTY, sought to bring leaders and perpetrators to justice, highlighting the challenges of reconciliation and justice in post-conflict societies. The former Yugoslav republics, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Serbia and Kosovo, have each followed distinct paths since the dissolution. While Slovenia and Croatia have joined the European Union, Others like Bosnia and Kosovo continue to grapple with political instability and economic challenges. The legacy of Yugoslavia is complex, influencing regional politics and ethnic relations to this day. The European integration of these states is seen both as a pathway to stability and a reminder of unresolved issues from the Yugoslav era. The lessons from Yugoslavia's rise and fall are profound, touching on the dangers of ethnic nationalism, the challenges of political federation, and the consequences of international intervention. These lessons continue to resonate in global discussions on state sovereignty, national identity, and conflict resolution. Yugoslavia's turbulent history has deeply influenced its cultural expressions. Music, literature, and film from the region often reflect themes of loss, identity, and remembrance. Artists like Amir Kusturica with his films and Goran Bregovic with his music have brought Yugoslav themes to a global audience. These cultural products not only serve as artistic expressions but also as mediums for dialogue and healing. They offer insights into the Yugoslav experience, helping to bridge historical divisions and foster a better understanding of the region's complex past. The role of culture in post-Yugoslav states highlights the importance of arts in post-conflict recovery and reconciliation. It underscores how cultural heritage can help mend divides and build a shared future, even after decades of conflict. Yugoslavia's story is a poignant reminder of the complexities of nation-building in a diverse region. The rise and fall of this once promising union offer valuable lessons on the interplay between ethnic identity and state politics. As the world continues to grapple with similar issues elsewhere, the echoes of Yugoslavia serve as both a caution and a guide. In reflecting on Yugoslavia we see the lasting impacts of its existence and its dissolution on global and regional politics. The story of Yugoslavia, with all its achievements and tragedies, remains a powerful narrative in understanding the challenges of modern nation-states. <laughs>